Okay, somebody left a comment on one of my videos asking for more information about degrees of freedom, so that's what this tutorial is going to be about. Uh, I'm going to use FreeCAD, but also I'm going to use a program called Blender as well to help explain uh, degrees of freedom. So without further ado, let's have a look at the Wikipedia description of degrees of freedom. Um, it's a little bit vague on Wikipedia actually. Uh, there's three types statistics, physics and chemistry and mechanics um, and all the definitions are a little bit <laughs> vague but uh, as an engineer I was taught this this classical mechanics sort of degrees of freedom basically it states that a rigid body has six degrees of freedom um, but as we as we'll look at the free CAD um, definition of degrees of freedom later it's not quite as obvious as that um, it's not interpreted in FreeCAD quite like that so I think the best way to describe the six degrees of freedom uh, if I use blender and just this ordinary cube so the principle is an immutable shape e.g. if I don't alter the physical dimensions of this shape will have six degrees of freedom based on the Cartesian axis system uh, this this notion of X Y and Z uh, three dimensions so we've got X Y and Z here uh, in this um, system and there is what we're going to consider to be an immutable cube so the six degrees of freedom are uh, movement in the Y, so like that, uh, movement in the X, linear movement basically, and movement in the Z, and then the, the final three are rotation about the X, about the X axis, so it's rotating around this axis, rotation about the Y axis, so rotating around that axis, finally rotation about the Z, and of course if you combine any of these six degrees of freedom, for example if I combine the, um, the three linear degrees of freedom, I can obviously move in arcs and things like that, so um, yeah, basically the six degrees of freedom as defined from a, a classical mechanics sense and from pretty what much what most engineers are taught to be uh, you know, any, any piece that you're working on can have six degrees of freedom so and okay, yeah, so we'll look at FreeCAD next um, so in FreeCAD, if I start a new sketch, and oops, just messed that up. And if I just put one line in, now obviously a sketch is constrained to just the x y plane. So rather than having the three axis system, we've only got a two axis system on a sketch. Um, the effect that this has is it reduces the amount of degrees of freedom to you can imagine we only have uh, linear movement in the Y linear movement in the X so there's no Z so we can't have linear movement in the Z or rotational movement in the Z we can have rotating sorry sorry we can have rotation about the Z axis um, which is what this is this is rotation about the z-axis but we can't have rotation about the x or the y-axis because we're fixed to a 2D plane so if you note here I've got a single line and it's saying I've got four degrees of freedom which is what you might expect if you consider the points at the end of this line um, you can have movement in the uh, y, movement in the x and then this point, movement in the Y, movement in the X, that's four degrees of freedom. But uh, where it gets a little bit funny is um, this shape is obviously mutable. I can scale it, I can change its length. Uh, 
So that definition that I had with Blender, considering this to be a rigid body, um, goes out the window a little bit. Whoops! When you can when you can actually change this the shape. So the way to reduce degrees of freedom in FreeCAD is to fix um, different points. So if I fix the horizontal distance of this from the axis, that then narrows the degrees of freedom down to three. So I've got I can't move any longer in this x direction. I can only move in the y with this point. So that's one degree. I can move both in the x and y here. So that's two degrees, um, making three in total. And as you can imagine, if I fix this in the vertical, that gets rid of another degree of freedom. Fix that in the horizontal, that only leaves us with one degree of freedom which is linear movement in the y-axis. So if I was to fix this uh, vertically, that would give us a fully constrained shape. So I think the question that somebody posted on uh, the video was how... Uh, I think it was how do you... Um, how do you know how many degrees of freedom you've got you can obviously you can look at this or uh, the best thing to do is to try and grab hold of an edge and try and move it around and if you can only move it in one direction you know that that's the degree of freedom that you've got to fix and constrain <laughs> now at the risk of confusing you because um, if we consider these two points to have two degrees of freedom each it's actually not quite as straightforward as that if I put a length constraint on this line it says I have one degree of freedom, which is um, which is actually rotational rotation about the z-axis. Um, and if I remove this constraint, it says I have two degrees of freedom. When in fact you might think that this point has two degrees of freedom so translational x and y and this point also has one degree of freedom so you might think that that's three degrees of freedom in total but uh, FreeCAD I think considers scale and rotation of shapes so in this case this shape has two degrees of freedom in that it can move translationally in the y and it can also rotate about the z-axis but I mean, in practical terms, you don't really need to worry as long as you're keeping an eye on how many degrees of freedom you've got left and you can click and drag shapes around just to get an idea of what type of freedom they have. So that's it, basically. Have a play around and um, see how you get on. Leave me any comments if you like. Uh, I hope that helps.